identity. Nigerian women, East African women, women from Ghana, they have no cultural identity. And I'm going to explain to you what I mean. You see, I work in an industry which is information technology. In information technology, there is one country that really, really stands out when you talk about information technology, and it's India. Indians, for some weird reason, I don't know how they, they got into that thing in their historical, the cultural context. They, everybody maybe went in for IT. The whole country made a powerful reference to IT, just like China made a huge push into industrialization that deals with tools. The idea of having the tools to make a car or make a, 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 a shoe, heavy industrialization that they can use to serve the world. India went into this heavy thing about information technology. In my 12 years of working in information technology, everywhere I go, it's loaded with Indians. It's all, if the information technology, for example, um, if a place has maybe 20,000 workers, I'm talking about a huge place in which maybe 10,000 of their workers are engineers, software engineers, computer engineers, so on and so forth. I can assure you that of the 10,000, 9,500 will be Indians. So what has been my exposure there? Indian women. They're the one, you ha they're four feet, some of them little four feet, four feet, you know, things, small things that are making dream money. They came direct from their village into the system and they're making 180,000, 190,000, 200,000 dream money. But there's a strange thing I notice about them. As they come to work, they're wearing that they're native wear that thing that they tie and hang on their neck with that dot here another strange thing i've noticed about them is you will never ever for all my years i stayed in the united states i was born here in all my years of staying here you'll never hear the indian women dragging their men to the american court system for divorce it is our women that use the american court system to destroy our men they bring the court in to help them destroy the men you will never hear indian women doing that thing you will never hear women from china taking chinese men into the american court system to destroy them with divorce you will never hear women from korea dragging their men in huge numbers into the american court system to destroy them but when it comes to african women east africa nigeria ghana when it comes to african women they just drag their men into the court system. One of the things that I've noticed in this system or in this problem is poverty. Bring these Indian women, they're making 150,000, 180,000. They don't drag their men into court. Plus, some like in most places, all the places I've ever worked in information technology, they'll have one car. Not that I'm supporting that behavior, but there's something strange on why I see them, they have one car. They wait for their husbands. Even if their husbands are working two hours over time, over their time, they'll wait. Some of them pregnant, waiting for their husbands. When it's finished, they go into the same car with their husband and drive home. I watch Indian women and women from so many other places. They're not crazy about the Louis Vuitton, Gucci, all the designers' wears. They're not even interested. Indian women, I meet them. They've been here 15 years, 20 years. They still keep their accent. They still speak as if they're living in India. But when I meet our women, and our women, all that they have to do is just get to a level of where they're making 50,000, 60,000, 70,000 or 80,000 a year. I'm talking about small money, it, small money. Immediately the marriage is in danger and they change. They start bleaching and they start talking. Sure, sure, yeah, sure, 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 yeah, sure. Yeah, I went, oh my God, I went to New York. And I'm like, even I who was born here, I don't speak like that. I look at others like the Chinese. They can't speak English very well. You know, and their women may be driving very expensive cars that belong to their husbands. And I look at the Indian women who don't speak English very well. And they're not interested in changing their accent or their undertone. And they wear their native dress, that thing, and everything to work. I look at Korean women. I look at other women. They have this sense of cultural identity. African women do not have a sense of cultural identity whatsoever. Little money and the marriage is over. One thing I've discovered, a common trend, once the women make, they go, nurse, 80,000 is all they need to make. And suddenly your, your marriage is in danger. They want to call the shots. They want to be the ones that control everything. And if you don't like it like that, they'll bring in the American courts to destroy your life, destroy everything around you. They will insult you. And I'm like, 80,000 is all that it takes for someone to change. Or 70,000, because most of them, even the 80,000 is over time. They've worked themselves Sunday, Saturday, Saturday night, Sunday nights. They've worked themselves to death. That money that they make as overtime is what is now changing into something that they will destroy everything around them. You know, 
this the part that i see also is that a lot of and i re remember whenever i make my videos i refer to bitch ass men bitch ass men we, it has come to a point where we really can't define marriages in the african context anymore in the united states because the man is changing diapers he's washing the plates he's sweeping the floor he's um cooking most men now have to cook to keep their marriages intact um he's picking the kids and dropping them like in what like I, I like i've seen the experiences i don't need to go far i don't want to go to you know but the woman is shouting at them where's the child's belt where's the child's socks where's the child's everything and the women go around telling everybody we are partners he's not there's nothing like head of the household we are partners okay so the men are doing everything in the women's role and also doing everything in their role and they also keep their jobs and that is supposed to be the perfect if you don't do like that they'll call american court on you this partner thing i've tried i've seen people try it and it leads to disaster like he says okay so since i'm the one doing the laundry and washing the plates and cooking the food can you help me change that bulb no that's a man's job okay can you help me change the engine oil in the car no that's a man's job okay can you help me paint the other no it's a man's job they the women are quick to tell you what's a man's job but you must do your job and do their job now and do their job and keep your job also in the society and come back and still even there's no respect you are ha you are supposed to be submissive or the marriage ends on your head and when you look into it she started making eighty thousand dollars and i compare that with the indian women who make a hundred and fifty thousand a hundred and sixty thousand a hundred and eighty thousand and don't forget this is india where they kill i mean a woman just saying no to the husband they start the honor killings the men are not romantic they're hardcore they are very very when i they are very very hardcore the way they order their families about and their women about they are not romantic they are not taking their women to dubai they are not buying louis vuitton and expensive perfumes and undies for their women they are not doing any of that and when they come to work they're smelling of turmeric and all those things that they put in their food their men are the, their men don't spray i mean some of them they come and i see the same jeans the same shirt for years but their women stick to them with the kind of money they are making even the Hispanic women, I look at them. Their men are poor. I mean, they all cross from the desert now into this town. They cross from desert, enter this town. I've seen some real dirty, nasty Hispanic women with drop dead, gorgeous Hispanic women. The women don't leave their men. The same story. We crossed from the desert, came here together. We're sticking together to the bloody end. But when it comes to African women, all they need is just make a little money and they've turned the marriage upside down. And there are bitch ass men who will support that behavior. In fact, those women are more celebrated here than even married women. You see a man, if he wants to do his birthday party or his child dedication ceremony or burial or anything, he's inviting all the divorcees who threw their husbands out of the house. They have so much honor. In fact, so many people, people are calling them and congratulating them for throwing out their husbands out of the house. And sometimes when you go into investigation of why the men, the bitch ass men are supporting that is because there's a competition. Africans in America compete to the point of death here in America which car someone is driving, which kind of house someone is driving, which kind of job. That's why Africans, it's better you stay away from Africans here. So since everybody's competing, if the woman can turn her house upside down and destroy it, she's already done the job for the man's enemies out there. They are applauding her and they now call her for parties and call her to come and drink in their house. And then there's the part two. Um, when they throw their everything away, a, a clock starts ticking, a timing clock. Who is going to be the first guy to fuck her? now that she's on her own now that she's single now that she's by herself and it leads to a proverb from my area there's this famous proverb from my area they say that there's nothing as shameful as a big woman to uncover white hair for small boys to enter white hair small boys will enter come back with just how they slap that ass how they shake it up and how they run it around and stuff like that and you'll be like and in her mind she's she's showing this attitude she'll go onto her facebook website right there as they as they as as um i'm too blessed to be depressed um as they go lower we go higher um yep we girls are flying higher hashtag liberated sisters and then you wonder what is wrong with african women ghanaian community is the first community i've seen that fourth marriage people fool fourth marriage, and, they, and if you put your ear to the ground they're still blaming the men at the fourth marriage of the woman she's married the first one divorced second one divorced third one divorced fourth marriage they fool they, they drink they chop chicken everything and they're blaming they're talking about how the all the other three men there's something wrong with them 
that there were animals, that there were this and that. And you wonder, is it always the men that is the problem? Same with the East African women. They will divorce. Three divorces, four. Somehow, the story will be twisted. It's always the men's fault. And she's marrying. She can marry up to seven times. Nobody knows what's going on. I am saying this because too many men's lives have been destroyed because of people who think they are in America. This America thing. Okay, I normally ask this simple question. What if a man became very rich and he had a house in America and he had a house in Canada and he had a house in Germany and he had a house in Japan. He had houses all over the place. What happens there? Is it going to be that as you bring a Nigerian or a Ghanaian or an East African woman to your house in America, she acts American? Then when you cross her over to the house in Canada, she now acts like she's Canadian. And then when you cross her over to the house in Germany, she now acts like she's German. And then when you take her over to Japan, she now acts Japanese Hong Kong, Kung Fu, Japanese Kung Fu, Shinto Kan, you know? What is it like? Do African women have cultural identity? Do they have any cultural identity? Do they have any loyalty in them as human beings? Do they? Or they're just moved by every wind of doctrine, every wind of thinking. And the hypocrisy, like I said, is now a lot of marriages, the men are the ones doing the women's roles, their roles, and keeping their jobs. All that to keep a man. And you see the men still coming, they come out with a big abada and turn it and throw it up and stand and say, hey, I want to thank my wonderful wife. I don't want a marriage for the sake of what it looks like in the public. I want to be happy about it inside in my life the show of that out there in the public it looks good but meanwhile back home i'm swallowing um percocet i'm swallowing high blood pressure medicine i'm swallowing all kinds of things to stay alive because i want to show people that i kept my marriage going it's crap it's bullshit and that's for bitch ass men i would rather live longer for my children than to stay in something that is horrific and try to keep it going one side is always throwing the fishing bowl in the sky one person is always trying to catch it when does the other person become mature and stop? Oh, because you're making $80,000. Like I said, come and see the Indian women. 150. The husband is making 180. 200. The husband is making 190. People are making dream money. Indian community, I've never seen anything like that before. In IT, they own it. Google, oh, Facebook, oh, everywhere, they own it. And they're making killing money. Those guys hold cash, dream money. And their wives are not going crazy. You see their wives by their husbands all the time. The other final part I'll leave you with is I thank God for Trump. I thank God for Trump because Trump has defined what America truly is about. When you come to a situation where a man, he's speaking on behalf of millions of people, talking about how he sees things, how he understands things from these millions of people who voted him in, you will understand that for you to come to this country and destroy your life, you're the most stupid person on earth. Trump make it clear that if you're a minority, we don't count you among people. And these are the owners of the land talking about that. If you're a minority, we don't count you. And you see other minorities, like I said, the Indians, the Koreans, the Chinese, other minorities, it's like they intrinsically know this is not their land. So when they come here, they hold themselves. It's not something you need to break your family apart over. It's not something you need to go crazy about. It. And you're 40 years old and you're now wearing mini and going back to the club. Nobody goes crazy except African women, Ghanaian, Nigerian, East African, they go crazy. They go crazy. And I'm glad Trump has told them it doesn't matter how you do, sure, sure, sure. Oh, yeah, that's what I am. From the show that we still don't count you as part of us. We don't. We know where you're from. And that it doesn't matter how much money you make here, it's because we let you stay here. And I'm glad that he has pointed it out and cleared it out and activated it so that, so that when you now take your husband, or take your wife into that system that doesn't regard you as something and destroy everything. I glorify God because some people have wisdom and some people do not. And I also thank God for that the bitch ass men who are who are rejoicing on how other men's demise. Like they're rejoicing that other men were destroyed that way. You know, so that, you know, so because he has it has lowered the competition. Now I have won. I'm going up. He's coming down. That God will punish them. God will never you since you can't rejoice in people doing well but you're waiting for people to go down so that it can if, if is that what you needed to be victorious then you're fake you're as fake as it gets you needed his wife to turn on him so that you can win that is why you're all all everywhere divorced women are being celebrated as the best women in earth here in America everybody call them for parties call them everywhere give them money do everything and sleep around with them because that's the thing you're all sleeping around with them nonsense 
oh and by the way i want to also finally use this to to kill one argument the argument i hear a lot of men now saying curse are, they're cursing their fathers that our fathers who didn't sweep the floor wash the plates cook food change the diapers um totally emasculated i mean men are totally emasculated they're doing everything doing the laundry that our fathers who didn't do that were useless we're better than them because we're doing our role the women's role we're superman we're doing the women's role our role keeping our jobs taking care of the children the children are now coming to ask us for the socks and their belts and where their sandals are and they don't know where they're and they're coming to ask us to iron their clothes and we iron our own clothes on top of that we're doing everything the woman's job now is just to comb her hair and look at herself in the mirror and when she's tired and she has choosing and sitting down spending an hour trying to find the right dress and then she gets into the car and drives to work you're doing everything and that in that world in that world we're saying that our fathers were stupid that we are better than them no we're not Maybe we are the ones that will have a shorter lifespan in the end of this story. So you know what? I'll leave it at that. Like I said, I normally say very controversial things and I speak for just a group of men. Not all men though. Because a lot of there's too many bitch ass men now. Men who are not real. <laughs> I know how the reaction will be here. You guys can come in and insult me and talk whatever you want to talk. But I've put my point down. African women have no cultural identity. And I think their background of poverty has made them that when they see small money, they lose control of themselves. Thank you.